Hi, I'm Brian Krebs, CEO of Metricworks, and I'm here to talk about Europe's impending open season on mobile marketing measurement. Let's find out why it's coming and what you should do about it. If you have a mobile app that uses an MMP and has both European users and Android users, chances are very high you're in violation of the GDPR and the French DPA. To understand why, we must first understand the six legal bases under which the collection of any device data, including first-party data like the IDFB, is allowed in Europe. They are contract, legitimate interests, consent, legal obligation, vital interests, and public task. The final three are not applicable to most apps. So let's examine the first three to find out which legal basis you can use to collect device data for marketing measurement. The contract basis allows you to collect device data when you are contractually obligated to do so. The European Data Protection Board ruled that Meta was not allowed to use the contract basis to justify their collection of device IDs for targeting ads. The ruling determined that because they were forcing users to consent to such data collection when they agreed to the Facebook and Instagram terms of service, the consent basis was applicable not the contract basis. And the consent basis disallows coercion, such as barring use of the product when consent is declined. Meta was fined over $400 million for that violation. There's no reason to believe privacy regulators will view measurement differently than ad targeting. So the contract basis can't be used to collect device IDs for MMP attribution. That leaves legitimate interests and consent. The legitimate interest basis allows you to collect device data when you are in the process of providing expected product functionality. A good example might be collecting the device's language so you can localize your app. The Irish Data Protection Commission advised TikTok to abandon their plans to use the legitimate interest basis for targeting ads with first party data. Again, there's no reason to believe regulators will view measurement differently than ad targeting, so the legitimate interest basis can't be used to collect device IDs for MMP attribution either. That leaves only consent. The consent basis allows you to collect device data if you have informed and unambiguous consent from the user to collect data for specific purposes. Therefore, you must obtain specific consent from every user before collecting device IDs for MMP attribution. ATT makes this straightforward on iOS, but a third party or custom consent solution is required for Android. To make matters worse, the MMP can only attribute users who consent in both the publisher app, where your ad is served, and your app, so false positives for organic will be extremely high, rendering last touch attribution data worthless for many apps. As you can see, privacy regulators could go after every app that uses an MMP SDK anytime they like since they all collect device IDs without consent, at the very least on Android. Let's examine the few options you have to avoid damaging headlines and devastating fines. They fall into two broad categories, disruptive and adaptive. If you don't mind disrupting your business, you can evade the GDPR and French DPA altogether. By exiting the European market, you have no European users and therefore avoid European privacy laws based on jurisdiction. By halting measurement activities completely, you avoid them based on scope. Most companies will find these options far too onerous to consider, so let's examine the adaptive options. One option is to simply comply with European privacy laws. That means obtaining specific consent from every user before collecting device IDs for MMP attribution. Remember, this will likely result in extremely high organic false positives and is difficult to implement on Android where there's no built-in consent framework. The other option is to evolve your measurement strategy to utilize privacy-preserving methods that don't require any collection of device data and are therefore outside the scope of privacy laws. Three examples of privacy-preserving measurement methods are SK Ad Network, GeoLift testing, and media mix modeling. SK Ad Network is only available on iOS. Unlike an MMP, it uses an on-device last-touch attribution method, so no, no data needs to be collected from the device. Unfortunately, it is difficult to implement and riddled with visibility issues. GeoLift testing uses geo-level data instead of device data to measure the incrementality of marketing through a controlled experiment. The fact that it measures incrementality, which is true marketing performance, gives it a strong advantage over methods based on last-touch attribution. 
Medium mix modeling is a statistical or machine learning approach that requires daily or weekly aggregations rather than device data as inputs. The resulting models can be used to measure incrementality across all marketing, including offline and brand, making them even more valuable for companies with diverse marketing strategies. While geolift testing and media mix modeling are very complex to implement, fully automated SaaS solutions like Metricworks Polaris are beginning to emerge, which combine both methods in a familiar MMP-like dashboard. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, please find us on the web at metric.works or email us at demo at metric.works. We look forward to hearing from you.